Hello guys, and welcome to a new series where I play um, 1v1 Conquest games and commentate over my first person footage. Basically going in depth about every little move I make, as well as my thought process behind each move. I'm playing this game against Isis Foreign Affairs, he's a colonel. I've played against this guy before when I was a lower rank. So yeah, we'll see how this match goes. So my initial CV placement, I put my CV in this spot right there. And the reason why I do that is because this small building is going to provide line of sight blockage from anything behind it. This tall building is going to provide line of sight blockage from anything looking at it this way, be it a helicopter or a ground unit. This building is also going to block line of sight from this direction, so it's actually a pretty safe space. The... Uh... The only way an enemy can spot a CV here is if they have one of their units around here. But I think, yeah, I didn't really like how my CV was kind of at the edge here, so I move it a little bit further back. So it's better hidden. Now for my initial unit placement, I have a uh, CV to get the plus one tick, a wheeled AA unit the OSA AKM, a medium tank, a T-72B1, as well as a squad of Spetsnaz Gru and BTR-90, now, um, and a BRDM-3. So the BRDM-3 is going to go into this forest to provide line of sight as well as stop anything coming down this road. And the medium tank, AA, as well as the Spetsnaz Gru Squad are going to go up the left side into um, this left side forest here to provide sneaky flank attacks onto his uh, safe one pointer. Now, for middle, I initially deploy two BMP 3s. This area is very open. If you get um, an ATGM here, it's excellent. BMP 3 has 2.8 kilometer ATGM. Decent AP, decent accuracy, it's a great unit. I um, spawn in Gornostrogi because I'm thinking of landing here and moving my Gornos up into that town so I can beat him there. I have a uh, squad of Gru and MI-24D to go into Anna, as well as a, a KA-52, just in case he has um, any helicopters of his own, I want to shoot him down. I bring a medium tank here so it can um, tank the damage of all, any unit coming down middle. Because generally the meta for this map is um, you try to take this town because this town provides you cover for this zone here and that zone there. So the enemy is usually going to pile a lot of his points here and be um, minimal on the left side. I also spawn a Tunguska M because I need AA support. So you notice I had um, two more squads of VDV-90. That's to go into the Anna Forest. But as you can see later, I, um, I don't like this initial deployment because I realize I don't have any recon units for middle. So I remove the VDV-90 and I put in a squad of Spetsnaz crew. But I feel like just one squad is inadequate, so I remove the K-52, and I get two squads of Gru and BTR-90. I also got rid of the um, Gorn of Strokey, because I just want to commit my points to the ground force, because I want to make sure I win that ground battle in middle. And with those three points, I spent it on two BRDM-3s. Not really sure where I'm going to be putting them, but it's always nice to have extra combat units. And we're going to jump to the actual game. Alright, right here. So I first select these units because um, order of prioritization. I want my middle guys to get to middle fast as possible. Because this town is extremely important, so I select these guys, fast move them here first. The MI-24D to Anna, because 
this is going to be the hot zone. And then I move these guys last, since um, I want to win the middle fight, but the flank attack, it's going to be generally safe for me. So I'm not too worried about um, giving immediate orders to these guys off the bat. Now, if you notice, I selected this entire group, fast moved them here, and I tabbed. This is very important for um, small scale micro. Select the entire group, fast move it here, tap to the UAZ, the UAZ, I issue an order to fast move there, the BRDM3, I issue a fast move to there, and everything else, I just leave it be. So, out of that entire group, the CV's moving here, the brdm 3s moving here, everything else is going to move down to the left exactly how I want it. I turn off the radar weapons on the Tunguska and the Osa AKM just in case my opponent starts off with a seed plane. Some players like doing that to scout out any um, opening helos. Hind is moving here. If you've noticed, notice how I right clicked here. Sorry, right clicked here and right clicked there. What I actually did was right click here, shift, unload, right click, let go of shift. So my MI-24D is going to fly here, unload the Gru, and fly back. The reason why I want him to fly back is because if there's any AA helicopters, I do not want their AA missiles to splash down on the hind and damage my Gru. I use the tab trick, um, tabbing to BR and DM3s, fast moving them here, Tunguska, into this hedgerow, because my initial force deployment is going to be around here, in that line. This hedgerow provides cover for my Tunguska. It's a safe distance from whatever the enemy is going to throw from this road here, and provides air cover in this radius, so any unit down here is going to be safe. My B1, my BMP3s, I fast move them here. BTR90, I fast move them here. Notice there were two BTR90s. I single out one of them and. I give him a fast move order here and a right click there because I want one squad of Gru here unloaded and moved into this hedgerow in Dimitri and I want my other squad of Gru fast moved here into Anna so I can have some um, extra recon in Anna if I need it. These guys are just going to do their thing. I spot the AH-1E Cobra. Um, this unit is partic is not particularly good because, um, as you can tell when I selected it, it only has the base tow. Against light armored vehicles, the base tow can do a decent amount of damage, but I'm more scared of the Hydra rockets. I don't want any of my units getting panicked, so I immediately pull these guys back. I turn on the gun on the Tunguska. If the, if the um, Cobra decides to move up, to snipe one of these units, I want to make sure the gun is on so I can easily punish that Cobra. He kind of stays there. So I pull my units back, and if you notice, I move them around here. The BRDM-3, I move them up here. BTR-90, I move them around here. The Tunguska is going to be in range real soon. Once I notice it's in range, I attack move it so it stops and uses its missiles against the uh, Cobra. I continue these guys, BRDM 3s here. I spot the Harrier here. And I do not like the Harrier because I'm afraid it might snipe my units on this road. So I do a quick MiG 25 PD purchase right here. Fly him out to harass. I notice he has a, uh, a super heavy. Or should I call this a heavy? I notice he has a heavy coming down this road as well as some unidentified units. I could use the unit ID trick, but since the distance is closing real fast and I don't want to lose recon here, I select my VRDM3, immediately pull him back here. With the PD, I harass the Harrier. I turned the gun off on the Tunguska initially, but I realize if the Harrier is going to fly here and attempt to pick off any of my units, I want to make sure the gun is turned on to punish the Harrier, so I turn it back on. BMP3s, I move him here because I recognize a lot of his point commitment is on the left side so that means he's not going to have much coming down this road so i want to use the atgms to their maximum potential 
in Dimitri where it can provide sight shots to this column coming down here. BTR 90s, I um, move here. The other guy, I move here because once again, I want Gru on this hedge line to provide um, good recon on his side of Dimitri. Alright, I notice his units here. I attack move my B1 so that it uses its accuracy rather than its stabilizer accuracy. 50% over 40% is a pretty big deal. Same with my BMP3s, I unload the Moto Strokey. That stops them immediately. And the Moto Strokey, I move here because I kind of just want to reinforce Anna. BTR90, I move him this way because I don't know what this unit is. I think it might be a tank. I don't want the, my uh, BTR90 getting destroyed and the crew alongside it. But um, I just immediately unload the crew anyway because I need the recon. I notice there's an HC Abrams. Well, not yet. I move my crew here to get into this hedgerow. I move my BMP3s back because I think this is when I spotted the HC Abrams. I um, My Gru was still walking down to this hedgerow. I should have pulled them back earlier, but um, I pulled the BMP3s back because I don't want them getting uh, sniped by that HC. BRDM3s, I'm moving them up here so they can provide auto cannon support on this road. I move the Tunguska here because now instead of my units being positioned like this, my units are starting to be positioned like this. And in order to provide cover for the units up here, I need my Tunguska in a better position where it can complete its task. Just checking up on these units. I notice my Gru is under attack. Forgot to move him back, so this is when I move my crew back. Moto Strokey also moving back. BTR90 moving back. The only unit not moving back is the T72B1 because I I kind of decided I could sacrifice my B1 because I don't want to lose my crew, which is my eyes. I don't want to lose my recon. The Wargame AI prioritizes the priciest unit it can deal damage to, so if my opponent is just moving his HC Abrams down here without auto-targeting down a unit, it's going to automatically target the priciest unit it can deal damage to, and that's the 85-point B1 over my 35-point Spetsnaz crew, or 30-point um, Spetsnaz crew, sorry. This is when I move my B1 back since I my Gru is a safe distance behind and I can easily jump him into that town. But I lose the B1, pretty sure. Yeah, I lost it. I saved up for a MiG-27 because I want to punish this uh, heavy buy. I immediately move my Gru into these buildings for cover. Unload the Gru here. Select this crew, move them around here, so I can have as much recon as I can on this road. This MI-24D is going to fly here, here. It's a shift command, so he's going to fly around here rather than straight down here to get to uh, the enemy spawn. Now, I notice my units are here, so I immediately unload my crew. I spot a recon unit here. It's the uh, ACAV. So my T72B1, I attack move him. MiG-27 get here, um, he gets the kill. And um, I had a good feeling that he could maybe also take down this Pavads since he still had his uh, missile, but I was a little too late on the micro. He wastes it on the a cab, I believe. Or, no, it goes towards the PVADs, right. So my micro was on point, except the missile missed. And if you notice the tracers here, there's another PVADs off to the left, so this plane is lost. 
I move my Spetsnaz Gru up to this building because I want as much line of sight as I can here. If my Gru are back here, then the buildings up here are going to block its um, line of sight up here. I notice the um, Cobra's flying in, so I turn on my Osa AKM. My Gru, I move back because I don't want it to get stunned or damaged by the rockets. It gets, uh, yeah, it gets the kill. I move up my BTR-90 and my Spetsnaz Gru into this forest. For the time being, I move my Osa AKM into this forest. The reason why I don't push him up is because I, um, I'm a little concerned that he might have units in here that can target down my Osa AKM. So I'm sending my BTR-90 and my Gru to first make sure that this forest is secure or that this forest is empty. My B1, I moved to this hedgerow because same principle. I wasn't sure if there was anything in this forest. Just to be safe, I moved into this hedgerow to be able to um, snipe anything that maybe pops its rear or pops its ugly head out of this forest or that forest. Most Rocky moving here. BRDM3, I uh, move him up here. Same with this BRDM3. Reason why I do that is because uh, the BRDM3 here, as positioned here, it these um, this hedgerow actually deprecates line of sight onto this road, so I want him at the tip so his line of sight doesn't get deprecated. Same with this BRDM3, I want to keep moving him up to get better recon on this road. BTR90, I move him here. This is a pretty sneaky spot. It's going to snipe at anything coming down on this section of road. I move my BMP3 here because I um, I know that since I have control of this town, as well as pretty much um, control over Anna zone, my BMP3 would probably be better off here with its ATGM once I get it reloaded, which I was planning on doing. I spot his I spot another HC Abrams, so I notice I have 95 points. I decide to wait 10 points for another MiG-27 buy. I move my Spetsnaz Gru from here, down here, because I do not want to lose sight on this HC Abrams. <laughs> Using the MiG-27 to attack the HC. I decide that if he had anything in this forest, they would have attacked my Gru and my BTR-90 moving up. So I'm fairly confident he has nothing here or here, so I decided to also move my T-Sang to B1 up into this forest. As for my AA, I move him into this little hedgerow there. Now, this was a little unlucky. My MiG-27 hits the first missile, I believe, but missed most of its gun damage. It gets zoned down by the PVADs and dies. I call it VDV90 because um, I just want something driving up here, unloaded, destroy that HC. But I realized that's going to be a pretty stupid idea since he has the HC in here. Yeah, it has a firing computer reset, but I think by the time my VDV90 come out here, his, his uh, gun is going to be fully functional again. It's just going to snipe down my VDV90. So I decide against that buy. My MI-24D is behind enemy lines, so I decided to move around here, try and snipe the CV. I move my T-70 to B1 here, of all places in the forest, not here, because I want line of sight coverage on this road. Since the enemy spawn here, the units spawn here, when they want to go into Fedor, the units are going to drive down this road and then come down here since that's the fastest route. And I want my B1 to snipe at anything coming down that road. Yeah. 
low strokey just moving into that forest. Now here I notice he has an A cav and a leopard C1 moving into Fedor. I know my BTR90 can um, duel the A cav, but what I'm more worried about is the leopard C1. Also, the fact that my BTR90 is at less than half health, it can be uh, one shotted by the command leopard C1. So I immediately pull the BTR90 back using reverse move and leave it up to my T72 B1, which is moving into position to kill the ACAV and the Leopard C1. But my BTR90 gets the clutch kill on the ACAV. He loses sight on my BTR90, so his Command Leopard cannot um, fire back at it. And my B1 is coming into position to snipe that C1. Now, since my units are positioned like this, I decide to move my Tunguska up right around here so that it can provide air cover for my units here. I think the air cover range for the missiles extends around here, so that's a pretty good uh, cover zone. BRDM3, I move him here so I can have extra advance recon on that road. Notice how since my Gru is on the edge of this forest, I can spot the Command Leopard C1 even though it's hidden on that hedge row. And my B1 gets the uh, final kill on it. That's a pretty big loss for my opponent. Now, if you noticed here after I killed it I used attack position to ensure that my b1 has line of sight on this road because I know since the enemy now knows I have a tank in Fedor and his um, his command tank got sniped here I'm predicting that if he's going to move into Fedor he's going to take this road rather than this road and I want to make sure that I have this road covered as well, so he can't push down here as an option. My Gru, I decide to move him up into this hedgerow here, because it's a, a very unorthodox spot. People will usually assume you have recon on these forests. Not around here, that's a little weird. Also. If you were to call him bombers, I kind of predict he'd bomb the crap out of this forest first, and I do not want to lose my crew, so I preemptively move them up to this hedgerow so that they're in a um, unpredictable spot, as well as provide recon for any unit coming down this road or that road. I move my BTR90 up since um, threat's been clear. I want extra guns covering that road. And like that, he surrenders. Good game to you, ISIS Foreign Affairs. And that is uh, game one.